Back in the early 2000s, a machinist by the name of Bill Bradley came up with a rather outside the box solution to mattress transportation, putting them in boxes. See what I did there? <laughs> Turns out it is perfectly possible to squish a full-size mattress into a box as long as you have the crazy specialized machinery to do so. Bradley's machine would soon completely change the way that we buy mattresses, pushing the industry into a new business model centered around cheaper products, no questions asked, return policies, and the end of mattress stores with those pushy salespeople. In many ways, the Casper way of buying mattresses has been a positive thing. But here's the thing, Bill Bradley did not start Casper. If you've never ordered a mattress in a box, you're missing out on a kind of special experience. These compressed little mattress burrito things spring to their full size almost instantaneously, which is bizarrely hilarious to witness. But the idea of marketing and packaging products to sell directly to consumers was not a terribly new idea. With the advent of, you know, the internet, direct-to-consumer businesses started popping up all over the place. Most notably, fashion. Back in our Shein episode, we talked about how brands like Azos and Boohoo took advantage of this business model to sell their products faster and cheaper pushing retail-dependent rivals such as Zara and H&M into the ground. Like, literally. Like, they murdered them, and then they just stuffed them in the ground and buried them. <clears throat> but clothes are a lot easier to package in a box and mail to customers compared to, say, oh, I don't know, a full-size freaking mattress. For early entrepreneurs, direct-to-consumer mattress sales was like the holy grail. Imagine you'd be able to sell beds for less in a more convenient way than those leading brands. And I mean, what customer wouldn't want cheap goods delivered right to your door? Well, actually, it turns out not a lot of people wanted that back then. Back in the day, you know, like prehistoric 2010, for the most part, people wanted to test and try out a bed before committing thousands of dollars to the purchase. Especially for, you know, aging folks like myself who have back problems and whatnot. I mean, picking a mattress is as important as picking who you're gonna marry and spend the rest of your life with. It is cheaper to get married though. Understandably, many customers didn't feel comfortable investing that much money into something that was so pivotal for their daily lives and that costs so much money. But this might be why you've actually never heard of Bradley's original bed in a box company, aptly named Bed in a Box. By the time Casper stepped onto the scene in 2014, Bed in a Box had been selling beds in boxes for eight years, yet there was still no hype for this stuff. So Casper did what many successful companies have done in the past, they stole the idea and they just did it better. See, Bed in a Box even today looks like it has a marketing department composed of those stock footage actors pointing at a screen with meaningless graphs on it. But also if those same actors were like in their, you know, late 50s, early 60s. Born in the early days of the internet, they failed to reach the audience that was most likely to be willing to buy a mattress online, millennials. Unlike Bed in a Box, Casper's success went way beyond expectations. They sold $1.8 million worth of mattresses in their first two months. A huge part of this success was likely due to their focus on the people already buying stuff online. This new generation of internet natives was ready for something new and YouTubeable. Seriously, we're the generation of people that are buying $100,000 cars off of a website. But even as a part of the millennial generation, if I'm going to sink a few grand into a mattress I've never seen, let alone laid on, I'm going to need some guarantees. And Casper is famous for providing just that. The 100-day return policy they offer now is pretty much standard across the industry, with some offering way more than that. These guarantees targeted at a millennial generation, more comfortable making big purchases online, meant that Casper was able to establish itself as a trusted brand in the business. 
Sprinkle that with some clever marketing, a solid product, and a few celebrity endorsements, and you've got yourself an almost instant mega brand, ushering in a new era of direct-to-consumer mattress sales. But this whole world is not without some significant setbacks. Turns out, when you sell people things that they've never seen and offer to take it back for free, a lot of people do that. With in-store purchases, people generally return about 5-10% to of the things that they buy. Online stores have a return rate of closer to 15 to 40 percent. 40 freaking percent. I mean, if you're losing 40 percent on your test scores, you're still passing, mom. But when that's how much of your business you're losing, that's a big thing to think about. I've never seen so many mattresses. Yeah. How many do you think there are? And this is especially challenging for the mattress business, which has to pay for all that transportation there and back, and then figure out how to deal with these mattresses that nobody wants afterwards. Now, I actually hadn't thought about this before this video, but like, how would you return a boxed mattress? Do you have to like figure out how to get it back in the box somehow? Or is there like a place you, you take it to and they do it for you? That feels wrong. Well, th we'll just fix this in editing. So the only way that these companies can pull off this whole rigmarole while still making a profit is if they sell a ton of mattresses, which they definitely do. The mattress industry has seen massive growth in recent years and is now worth $81 billion. And that's just in the States alone. Almost half of these consumers buy online compared to 27% in 2016. Despite the added expense of dealing with the returns, these direct-to-consumer businesses have witnessed so much growth in the last few years that established retail-dependent brands have started to vanish including RIP, the largest US mattress retail mattress firm, which filed for bankruptcy in 2019. Rest in peace. Since Casper started challenging the status quo, it seems like the mattress industry has changed for good. But has it changed for the better? Now here's the but, or the thing, in the room that we haven't talked about. The reality is, these companies just don't have the resources or the infrastructure around them to dispose properly of all of these mattresses. Casper says a lot of nice things about donating to charities and recycling their products, but even they admit that this isn't always possible. Charities often won't or can't accept used mattresses because, you know, people have sex on them. Oh, and they have bed bugs sometimes too. To make matters worse, the USA doesn't have enough recycling facilities to process every rejected bed, so many of them end up going straight into the landfill. So many, in fact, that if you stacked them all on top of each other, they'd be easily taller than any of the mountains in the world a couple of times over. It's an impressive visual. The craziest thing that I can't stop thinking about, though, is how obvious the problem can be connected to this business model specifically. There weren't massive mountains of mattresses before Casper mainstreamed this idea. People bought a mattress or maybe two in their lifetime and they went out of their way to make sure that they got the right one. Now we buy one after watching a few YouTube reviews, which is a whole weird side of YouTube by the way, with the safeguard that if you don't like the mattress, you can just send it back. So thanks to Casper, beds that come to your house delivered in boxes are a mainstream common thing, along with the mountains of waste that they create. But in a few short years, they may just be the norm. Which means that it might behoove us to try and find ways to mitigate some of the downsides of these kinds of purchases. Some brands are trying to do that. Purple and many others have partnered with a business called ShareTown, which helps resell products after, giving them a cleaning and clearly labeling them as used. Other brands connect customers with local charities or recyclers. And still others are trying to make durable, even repairable mattresses to begin with, which is kind of crazy to think about. But one of my favorite companies in this industry is Avocado, which is the mattress that I use and they have gone to great lengths to create mattresses sustainably. 
I talk more about why I love their products in a video where we tour our whole apartment on my other channel, and that will be linked down in the description as well. As for your old mattresses, websites like Bye Bye Mattress can help with finding a recycler near you so you don't have to risk your stuff being added to the mattress mountain. As, as fun as that sounds when I say it that way. But in general, please think deeply before you buy things online with the idea that, oh, well, I'll just return it after. Because sadly, I think we don't realize that a lot of that stuff doesn't just go back to a person who is in need, but rather to the trash, which is terrible. And we're better than that. You're better than that. You deserve better than that. <laughs> I don't know why I'm pep talking you right now. But if you have an experience with box mattresses like I do, we would love to hear what you have to say. Personally, I thought it was crazy and kind of hilarious and so far it's worked out, but I know a lot of people have not had the same experience. So any feedback is appreciated and helps grow this little community that we're building here. And of course, if you like this video, please literally like it and subscribe if you want to see more of this stuff down the road. Maybe ring that little bell so you get notified when we hit and upload. And of course, if you do all those things, we'll see you in the next one.